Welcome back to the Realistic Road to Glory. We have a more straightforward month today. We think, we feel, we hope. Results have been good, but still ugh, would have loved to have gotten the win against Swansea. But we snuck an equaliser. Would have loved to have gotten a win against Stoke, but they just somehow turned us over. Bit of a wobble a couple of episodes ago, but we're hoping to get back very much on the winning streak wagon. We haven't actually won back-to-back -back games. Oh, actually, there. Cardiff from Preston. I thought it was a little bit further than that. So, Millwall, uh, Birmingham, Millwall, Norwich and Middlesbrough today. We will be simulating the Millwall at home and playing the other three. And, well, quite frankly, we're just going to crack the hell on with it. Same thank you to those of you on the board behind me again for your continued support. That's Mr. Leon, uh, John and Max. And, of course, keep your comments coming with press conference questions. We shall get three of those into you today a little bit later on. So you give you a refresher quickly of where we are in the table. Still sixth. Chasing that automatic promotion spot, which is four points above us. Sheffield United, the ones there at the minute. But Bournemouth have shown another chink in their armour. They've now only won 13 of 15, drawn one and lost one. It's going to be tough to try and catch them. We're already 12 points behind after 15 games. But the fight for that second automatic promotion spot is very much on with half the league at the moment. Birmingham, however, in the relegation zone, lost four of their last five. Which means, of course... He'll probably beat me. Elia up top is going to be a difficult player to play against. They've got Karamoko Dembele on the left-hand side. I think it's Karamoko anyway. Sunic in the midfield as well. Tyler Roberts Cam has been difficult to play against. Longello actually, uh, left-back for them, is on loan at Cambridge in real life now. So uh, we're intrigued to see how good he could be IRL. And hoping he's not very good on FC. Because it means we can get the better of him down the right-hand side of our attack with Samiento. Drop the video a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of this save. And hopefully we can start with three points at St Andrews. Looking for Fafana as that link-up player. He really, I was going to say, keep it in play. He really is a brilliant build-up target man at the minute, Fafana. I could look for him every single time. And 99 times out of 100, he wins that lofted ball over the top. McKengo snapping at the heels of Aaliyah. Tyler Roberts has options out wide. Here is the aforementioned Longello. And Calvin Ramsey wins it back. That means that the left-back's out of position. So we will just look to exploit that space at the minute. Got Bardi Central here. And then look at the man over the top, running forward from right back. Calvin Ramsey in a great position. Dinks it in. Fafana, oh my God, your first touch, mate. With Lobato waiting at the back post for a squared ball. The goal gaping, waiting for the ball to just be fired into it. Fafana lets it hit him on the hip. And it bounces about 10 yards away. And now instantaneously at the other end, we're in trouble. Only we're in trouble. They very nearly bleed and scored. It is Sirigi Dembele, who's potentially f even faster still than Karamoko Dembele, actually. This could be difficult to deal with. Luton 1, Middlesbrough 1 is a live result in the top right for me now that's hidden by my face. I'm certainly hoping there's not going to be a goal here at present with Birmingham in possession. And thanks to that block, there isn't. But it's been quite the even half hour so far. And they are very accurate with a passing Birmingham. They don't play like a team that have only got one win and four defeats from their last five games passing the ball about with conviction with confidence and they look dangerous every time they get forward there you go in lad back there Oakley's ah got the option inside but he decided to go back down the line and that was not the obvious Tyler Roberts ooze around the ground as Tyler Roberts hits the side netting that's the closest either side have come to a goal so far but it's still zip a piece after 35 minutes. This ball to Siriki Dembele. You know he wants to cut that back. Don't let him. Well in, Kashin. Feel it. Roberts. Well in, Josh King. Okay. Still having to fight hard for everything. Every ounce of possession. Every percent of possession. But fighting hard is working so far. Samiento through that gap. Here we go. Oh, Sanderson read me so, so easily. I thought he'd expect me to drive towards goal and he'd go and try and cut off a near post driven cross. So I tried to pull it back to Fafana and he was ready for it. Tyler Roberts looking to do something similar and Kirk Henderson was ready for him. But still, Tyler Roberts gets the ball into Aaliyah in the middle. And that's as much as Birmingham can come up with there. Going to need some changes here, I think. Bardi's been a little bit quiet. Samiento's been okay. 
But I think we're going to bring Darbo on on the right hand side to try and add a little bit of an injection of even more pace. And hopefully just as much quality on the ball. They're taking Tyler Roberts off. It was number eight for number two for them. Which feels like it's a, a centre mid or a cam for a right back. But I'm sure it's not. Darbo, unless they've changed formation of course. Dembele quickly to Aaliyah. And he's, well, he is. It's Ethan Laird they bought. So he is a right back, but they're playing Ethan Laird at Cam, I think. That's a very strange tactical decision. Maybe they're running low on squad numbers. Nice tackle by Calvin Ramsey. That little lift to make sure that Darbo gets to it. So he does, and he's going to have the legs here and the fresh legs and stamina to get away from Sunyitz. Oh, I tried to burst past Garces and it didn't work. We need to be maybe a little bit more back to basics if we're to cut Birmingham apart here. I keep trying. Little intricate passes or those sharp turns. And it, it's just not quite working. Shola to Josh King. Two options out wide right here. Calvin Ramsey being one. Pontus kind of disappeared into the middle of the pitch there, which is not ideal. McKenga will find him here. He'll now find Josh King, who's found some space. But not the finish on the end of it. It was really well worked. Christ knows where Pontus is going there. I've not got him set to cut inside. He just buggered off. It's not really what I want my wingers to be doing there, mate, if I'm honest here. Supposed to go to McKingo, mate. McKingo, mate. McKingo, mate. Sariki's in. He's really in. I couldn't do anything. You can't do anything! Before you have the chance to press the button, you're tackled. 1-0 Birmingham. They don't deserve it. I'm pissed, but what can you do? A very FC goal. I win it back, and then I'm just trying to get rid of it. And he's taken two touches before then trying to play the pass. Why? Oh, God. What a pain in the backside. If we do find a goal now, it'll be even more annoying, I think. Because it sh could have been and should have been a winner. And if we get anything now, it's only going to be a point. And I have to drill this for Fafana. Needed that first touch. Please be onside. He is. Another very late goal to rescue something. They were particularly fortuitous with their goal. Have to be honest, I was very lucky with the rebound for mine. Maybe a point apiece is in the end the fairest result. Although, it might not be over yet. Ethan Laird, the right back come central attacking midfielder apparently. I mean, we're in the 94th minute now. You are only supposed to add two on, ref. So if this flies in, I call Scripton. Good save, Valdemarsen. Just get rid of it. All right, 1-1 one, one, then. Fair enough. Fair enough. Some games are difficult. Some games are lucky. Some games just wind you up. That was one of those. Still in sixth with that point from the last game, but presumably... Actually, no, I think Sheffield United in second lost to Bournemouth at the top of the table. They did. So Bournemouth now with a nine-point lead at the top of the table to Norwich in second, who we play later today. In fact, it will be the next played game, Norwich City. We are five points behind them, but obviously can close that gap to just... Uh, two should we beat them and then we're at only three points now off Sheffield United so still in the hunt for that second automatic promotion spot let's have a quick look at the first press conference question of the day this is from uh, Leone who says that with a lot more oh, sorry rephrase with a lot of the more senior players having left in the summer who are you looking to to fill the leadership gap it comes down to not just, oh great, we're going to be missing players on international duty in a championship game when there shouldn't be international games. Sick. Um, it comes down to sometimes experience is experience and leadership. Ennis Bardi obviously is a player that's played at a higher level than this in the earlier years of his career and absolutely will look to him to try and lead the team forward. But Kurt Kenderson has been a first team player in this side for three, maybe even four years now, at least. And very much is a man that deserves that captain's armband at 21. He's kind of our own Matthijs de Ligt. So his leadership is going to be vital. We're hoping, though... Oh, what? It pisses me off so much that you get international breaks in the championship. You shouldn't! You shouldn't! I'm going to lose my mind. 
Okay, well, I'm going to go and deal with that, and then we shall quickly sim this next game. But Beck is going to have to go in goal. Uh, I'll put Zemura right back purely because of the rating moving forward. McMurney, McBurney and Schmodix will go on to the uh, bench as well, and that will have to do us for this one. Hopefully, fingers crossed that lower-rated goalkeeper isn't going to cost us. They're playing a 4-4-2 still, as they always do, Millwall. Please get a result. Oh, breathe a sigh of relief. Shola with the goal in the 26th minute. Now, though, I'm fearing that we're actually going to not have those players available for Norwich either, which would be a real concern. There just was a two-week gap for an international break earlier in the month between Birmingham and Stoke. And now it's get. Oh, I tell you what. Sometimes the simplest of things for this game are the most difficult for them to get right. And it's infuriating. We just want a realistic career mode. I'm trying my best to make it a realistic career mode. And even though I'm trying my best, I'm still getting done over by the game. We'll try and make sure that everyone is as fit as possible for the game against Norwich. Fingers crossed we will be able to do that. And hopefully we'll get everybody there on the bench sharp as well. They should all be... Yeah, we'll get everybody on the bench sharp. Uh, all subs and reserves. Fingers crossed that everybody will be as fit as possible for this next fixture. Please be available, those that weren't. Ah, oh, they are! Ramsey's not fit, but at least Darbo and uh, Valdemarsen can come back in. Thank the Lord. Well, Zamura will continue on at right back then. Although, let's give Oyagoke a game. Oyagoke's actually been good, I'll be honest. He has been a genuine worthwhile inclusion. We'll put Shami Smodix on there instead. Back to as close to full strength as we could be, although it would have been nice to have Calvin Ramsey in there, but Oyagoke okay, okay, will certainly do a job. Right then, uh, I'm glad that we've got everyone back because Norwich is a very, very difficult game. We've got a game in hand here now on Southampton and Sheffield United, who have lost again, might we add, I think. No, the game, the gap was... Yeah, they must have done. The gap was three points. They've now played a game more, so they've lost that. Norwich have lost in their last fixture as well, so our gap has closed down to two from five. So if we can beat them here, we'll go above Southampton, we'll go above Norwich, and ah, we're going to need to win by four goals, which won't happen, but we can at least go level on points with Sheffield United. We could be as high, potentially, as third or fourth if we get the right result in this next fixture. Let's get the right result, shall we? Norwich's lineup still sees Liam Bennett at right back, although... They're not playing uh, Liam Lee, our former Cam, at Cam. They're playing Byram instead. They've won four in a row, but then lost that most crucial last game, which is why they're now vulnerable to us for this fixture. They're missing Hills through suspension as well. They too have got some tired players on the bench, but Diabate, obviously, at centre-back, is a former player of ours as well. Not sure where Solis is. Not in their squad at all. Have they lost him? Have they sold Solis? He was their go-to left mid, wasn't he? Very, very good as well. So, glad to see the back of him. But, Borja Sainz is going to be just as good and just as dangerous. Shola will get the start continually because Bardi still has been a little bit iffy of late. So, hopefully Shola can impress. Hopefully everybody can impress. A win, please. Samiento, maybe this time we can find Fafana. No. Really putting the pressure on Norwich City, though. When they've got the ball, I'm not going to press as much as they do when we have it. Not really that good as a as a pressing player, personally. I tend to make too many mistakes one-on-one -on -one with defenders. But hopefully, just by having people positioned well enough... <sighs> we can uh, cause them some damage. Damage received. Kamara makes it 1-0 Norwich. Good. Oh, so much space for Byram in between the lines. So, who to close him down with at the minute? Lovely dinked ball out to Montoya. Good block by Ergo Cape. Okay. For Saints. Oh, Valdemarsen with a very important near post stop. Goal scorer Kamara will take the corner. Norwich are um, pretty good right now. I'm Struggs here. Diabate's not the man in an offensive sense. For Saints could be. Back to Montoya again. They're utilising him a lot, actually, in that fullback role. Here's Byram again. Makengo's going to look to step in and has done well to do so. Looking for Fafana, but the way, <coughs> the way Norris press, 
and the way that we've been quite slow in the offence does make it difficult to try and find a way forward. But Crescene here hopefully can find someone in amber and black. What a terrible cross. William McKengo. Solo with a nice turn. Josh King getting beyond the lines. Fofana looking to do the same. And then Lobato. Lobato in the box. I had to go far post. It was on his left foot. And near post would have seen it definitely go wide. Or straight at the goalkeeper. That's our first shot of the game. But it's a positive start to the second half. If we can show more of that. Oh, what a pick out. Just stood on his own there, Kamara. If we can show more of that attacking intent in this second 45. Then maybe there might be a point or more in this for us. Cassin's getting forward. And Fafana looking for Shola through the gap. Sure, T Ray. Ugh. What an awful finish. Shola, you're supposed to be better than that, mate. That was rubbish. Hiram. And Bennett again. Oh, should have read that, really. Away. Oh, I thought he saved it. He got a run on the defender. It's Kamara again, isn't it? Norwich at the double. Bennett driving down the line. Delivers the ball to the near post. And he just gets ahead of the defender. The defender's just kind of leaning back rather than attacking the ball. Almost allowing the attacker to get in. Got to be braver than that, Kirk. Put your body on the line. Put yourself in a position where you might get hurt. But it'll stop the ball going in. I mentioned about how your experience at such a young age can be drawn upon. Quite frankly, that was not leadership quality, was it? Oh. Oh, come on! Well, we were hoping to turn around the goal difference to Sheffield United with a win. Turns out it might be doubling the other way. Norwich have been a cut above. Genuinely. Just, we're not on their level today. Overall, with, in terms of playing squad, we are. And on occasion, we have matched them performance-wise. But they are a side that tends to get the better of me. And they have done so once more. If that Norwich game was important in terms of trying to chase the top two, this Middlesbrough one is even more important in terms of now not falling so far away from those top two that automatic promotion just becomes an impossibility for us. Because let's be honest... We're only fighting for that one spot in second because Bournemouth are quite clearly going to win the league at this rate. I, I just can't see it happening any other way. So Middlesbrough aside, we have beaten previously. But the minute we either win or lose, don't we? We're not drawing many. And quite frankly, I'm not winning many right now either. This is what happened last season as well. We, we start really brightly and then results just kind of evaporate. And then it comes back to us in the second half of the season. The key is not losing in as much ground in this mid-season melee where for whatever reason the side just never seems to perform i can't really put my finger on why it happens year in year out but it it does seem to be the way that things go we've got a press conference question here from uh, luke kelly of the daily scoop turn once more it says with you rejecting a loan proposal by sheffield united as well as their rumored frustrations with Traore's lack of significant game time does it make you worried that Chris Wilder may not be willing to do business in the future? Quite frankly, I don't really worry about personal relationships with other managers. I always take things on a deal by deal basis. And ultimately, if a deal is right for a player or a deal is right for the club, I don't think it really matters who the managers or clubs are in particular. Clubs are always looking out for something that is good for them. And they wouldn't turn down a good deal if it came from someone that previously they'd not really had that good a relationship with. So I'm not too bothered about that. We absolutely can still go up. Calvin Ramsey will be back for this fixture as well, which is going to be very, very important, having him back at right back. And we won't underestimate Middlesbrough. We don't underestimate Middlesbrough. We don't really tend to underestimate anyone. And they look at their form and their quality of squad. It's got to stop going behind early on. Seems to be the frustration at the minute, doesn't it? We're not keeping enough clean sheets. Haldemarsson was, and I, th I swear since we saw it notified to us and mentioned it in a video, the clean sheet leader, since then, I don't know, as I've actually kept a bloody clean sheet. Lobato avoids the challenge, which was rough and tumble. 
Hana to King. King to Crescene. Now, Crescene's crossing I don't actually trust, based on the last couple of examples. Josh King's dribbling, however, I do very much trust. Unless he gets a shove in the back, which A, is a foul, and B, means he gets a dodgy touch. How's that not a foul, then? Oh, just give me Josh King. I hate the player switching system in this game. It just doesn't give you the player that you need. I'm trying to switch to Josh King there, who's next to the man with the ball. Here with the yellow boots to try and close him down. And he just gives you anyone but. By which point, you can't actually close him down with anyone else. He gets a shot away and he freaking scores. I love the realism in this save. But my god, it's frustrating at times, isn't it? Come feet. Fafana. Lovely movement. Josh King. Nabato's there. Beat your man. Oh, everything but. Again, everything but the goal. Please, Fode. Thank you, Fode. There you go. That's better. 1-1. One, one. Not this inside. The final with a lovely turn. Oh, and I just need the finish, please. Please, just give me the finish. Makengo, look for Lobato. A 1-2 maybe. No, and his Bali's touch lets him down again. Close control. Letting down some of our better players today. 1-1 one, one at half time. At least we're not losing at the break this time. Come on, let's win it. Benny needs runners. There's Calvin Ramsey. Ever ready and willing. Delivery's great. Fafana. Oh, br brilliant save by Brint. A brilliant save. Feels excuse the punt. Excellent attempt from Fafana. Great improvisation to try and divert the ball towards goal. It just wasn't quite good enough. Loads of space here for Isaiah Jones on the right-hand side, but Crescene gets across to him and will get to the ball first and get rid of it as well. This is really livening up now in this second half. Equalising goal for us to seemingly sparks both sides back into life. Fafana's making the run. Number six doesn't know whether to go to the man or not. In the end... He didn't. Oh, but Fafana can't find the corner. It's a poor finish on the end of a really, really great opportunity. Please, Lobato. Well done, lad. One. Short. Fafana. Darbo. Darbo. Darbo! Dickhead. Wide. On target, lads, please. And rams it. Into the space. And forward. Lenny. Oh, please. Josh King. Josh King! Great save at the near post by the keeper. That sort of save. He's just run into me. Don't fail. Don't give a fail. That sort of save is exactly why I tend to go across goal. You just have more luck. Oh! Fode for Fana! Round of applause, please. Applause emojis in chat and in the comments section. Fode for Fana with, well... If the first one today that managed to make its way into the goal of the season category we'll be lucky to see one better than that, won't we? Oh Mwah! Foodie! Ramsey, slow it down. Oh, accurate pass was the attempted reason to slow it for slowing it down. Benny Troyer is there though. No you don't. Benny Triore is very, very useful in scenarios like that. Randall trying to squeeze it. Probably shouldn't have done. Probably should have... I get away with it. Probably should have, should have elected to look to uh, maintain possession. for Fana hat-trick. 3-1, game over. Get in! After the defeat to Norwich, it's exactly the response we needed. A hat-trick hero from Fode for Fana. Get in, lads. Three points. Back towards the playoffs we go. Randall, out to Benny. Traore to Lobato. He could get four. He's going to get four. He's got four. Fofana, 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 Fofana. Unbelievable. All right, goal difference deficit from the Norwich game restored. I didn't expect this. 
But since Fofana scored that overhead kick, Middlesbrough have just been so shell-shocked by that that he's gone on to score another two more. If we don't get bids from big clubs for Fofana in January, I will be flabbergasted and also heartbroken when they do eventually come in. Three minutes added on, two of which played now. I'll be honest, I thought I'd won the ball there. Don't dive in. Oh! The attacker reacts quicker. You see it a lot. The attacker just reacts quicker than the defender there. I don't know how Ramsey didn't win the ball. The deflection goes straight towards Isaiah Jones, who nods home. So this is well, we scored some more goals, innit? Well, the goal deficit to Norwich isn't restored, but it really is Fode for Fana, as uh, Ramdog and Jambi have said in chat. Fode for Fana. Seven attempts, four goals, overhead kick Fode for Fana. Gets us all three points. Sheffield United draw. Bournemouth draw. Luton draw. Norwich lose. Big results for us. So important to get that result. He's a top, top player. Beyond a top player for us right now. We were better prepared. Told you Middlesbrough aside that we've played well against and no gotten further. good results against before. More often than not, to be honest, it's been 1-0 against them. But on this occasion, 4 bloody 2 Now we get a final press conference question from... Uh, Benjamin Besser says, Mr. Monk, Ben Bessemer from the Chestnut Gaming Network, with January on the horizon, currently, is there any plans to dip into the market? Now, we do have some money available. £14 million ish and some wage budget left. I am very much expecting some bids for some of our better players, though. That's the issue at the minute. Who those better players might well be. B, or who those bids might come in for, I don't know. He's still trying to sell Sammy Schmodix. That hasn't materialised yet. I'm hoping that it will. If not, I can try and use him as part of another deal. We had our eyes on the Austrian from Plymouth. And I still would be keen. But I don't know whether he's the right man right now to go for at this stage of the season. It's uh, December coming up, which is ve a very busy month. I'll, I'll show you it for uh, Lobato's. I think that was him being happy. I hope it was him being happy. December is a busy month. Southampton, Bournemouth, QPR, Sheffield United, Luton, Rotherham. Four games there that we want to play, really. Southampton, Bournemouth, Sheffield United and Luton. I don't really want to be simming any of those four, quite frankly. Uh, Bournemouth top, Norwich second, Forest third, but with a game in hand. Bournemouth are already at 50 points. Christ. Uh, Middlesbrough there right behind us. Southampton 7th, another very important game. Bristol City 9th. Luton are 11th, so not having as good a season. To be fair, they weren't having as good a season last year either, were they? Luton were mid table last season too. QPR are in the relegation zone. Rotherham are in the relegation zone, so they're definitely two simmable games. Maybe I, maybe I sim Luton as well? Is the Luton game at home? Not that that really seems to make much of a difference at the minute for us. The Luton game's at home. All right, I'll play Southampton, Bournemouth and Sheffield United. We'll sim QPR, Luton and Rotherham. And that will get us to the January transfer window sooner rather than later. Where, well, there is money available to do some business. But what business I do at present, I am unsure. No, not Zemura. Ramsey. I, I don't know what business to do. Maybe a, maybe a step up on Makengo. That would be... The obvious thing to do with King young and growing, Randall younger and just as good a squad player as Makengo, in fact, better in almost every stat. Uh, but Makengo's been solid, so good. If we are to replace anyone in the starting lineup, it would be Makengo at this stage. But whether there's any, we could go up to 79 rated as well, but whether there's anyone available that's good enough, cheap enough, I don't know. I would contemplate using Makengo as part of that deal to bring someone better in to try and make it more affordable. But quite frankly, I don't know as we're going to have the funds to to step up to that level, really. What would be great is if Labata could get up to 80 rated and then we can really open up the doors. But perhaps it's a little bit unrealistic for us to be looking at 80 rated players. Well, it would be 
we could pick people up from within the, the division, certainly. But oh, I don't know. What would you do in the January transfer window? YouTube comment section. Please tell me. Big episode tomorrow, then, as we'll get through all of December. And quite frankly, there is a lot of games to be played between now and the end of the season. And, uh, well, as long as we're at least in the top six, we're happy. But we still would love to be in that top two. I think Fode Fofana's four goals and certainly that second one deserve a like, don't you? And do subscribe to the channel, hopefully, for more goals of that quality, although I can't promise anything. Join me tomorrow for an even bigger episode with giant opponents as our season takes its next twist and turn. I'll see you then.